If you're still trying to decide which phone to buy, the Pixel Pro 7 or the iPhone 14 Pro Max, this is the video for you. We're going to go and take a look and break down the phone area by area and have a look and see which one wins in which areas. We'll take a look around the design, the connectivity, the display, how well the software works and the most important thing which a lot of people would be looking at is the camera settings within and how well they work. First we'll look at the price point, the Pixel 7 Pro comes in at £849 for the 128GB and the iPhone 14 Pro Max comes in at £1199 and again also that starts at 128GB. Now in terms of the colours, there's four colours available on the Pixel Pro and there are four colours available on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So both phones come with a always on display. The Google Pixel Pro actually dims after a little while. It just shows the clock and the date and the weather. It does show the battery percentage down here and it does show you roughly where the fingerprint would need to go. So using the fingerprint is fairly smooth within this. The iPhone 14 Pro Max also has the always on display and on here you can see the date, time, whatever widgets you set at the top and you can see the background as well which is an advantage if you want to be able to see that. If we have a look at these side by side you can see the pixel is ever so slightly taller. It's a little bit thicker when it comes to the camera but it's somewhat not annoying when you put the phone down. So when you actually put the phone down on the Google Pixel it doesn't move around and it's quite smooth you can type away on the desk. On the iPhone you still have that annoying thing where you can press either corner and it bounces up and down. I'm not sure if you can hear that on the mic or not but you can see that still moves around which makes it somewhat annoying to use this when it's sat on a table. If we have a look at the back you can see the three cameras are on each of them which are quite prominent. You have the flash and you have the sensors that are built in here as well. Both are very prone to getting dusty in these corners so even if you have a case you'll find that they do get dusty around there as well. This has the glass back, the Google Pixel has the glass back, the iPhone has more of a matte type finish on the back. If we go ahead and look at the sides you can see on one side there's a sim card reader for the Google Pixel and on this side we have the switch for the silent button and the volume up and down. On this side we have the power button for the iPhone and on this side we have the power button for the Pixel and the volume up and down button. In terms of the bottom, both phones have speakers, they both have stereo sounds which we'll put to the test shortly, but one has a USB-C connection and the iPhone has Lightning 2.0. Now we all know USB-C is coming to Europe next year, so that's going to be something most likely Apple are going to introduce. However, we know the advantage of USB-C over Lightning 2.0. One thing I'm actually disappointed with both of these phones is neither of them actually have Wi-Fi 6E built into them. So whereas the adoption across Wi-Fi 6E is getting greater, this doesn't seem to exist on here. Now let's take a look at the display. So we spoke about the always on display earlier. In terms of unlocking the phone, getting onto the phone itself, you'll have a fingerprint reader on the Google Pixel and also alongside that you can use your face to unlock the device as well. So that works with this. It doesn't work as well as the Face ID on the iPhone itself so you can just tap it, swipe up and it's already open for you. This does work in both portrait and landscape now so previously it didn't work in landscape. You can see both phones have cameras on the front which is a single one on the Google Pixel however on the iPhone you have the thing called the dynamic island. So if it's not something you've heard of before it's a little interactive display whether you're doing things whether you're making a call listening to music which allows you to scroll through your music play the next track etc etc. So there's quite a few things that the Dynamic Island's useful for. Uh, I have a full review on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. You can go ahead and check that out. I will drop a link down in the description below. Along with the single camera on the iPhone, it has some sensors which helps along with the picture taking and the Face ID as well. You can see on both phones, both the Pixel and the iPhone, there is a bezel that goes all the way around the outside. So both phones have this. One is not more prominent than the other. We have one on the Pixel and we have one on the iPhone. Maybe if we are being picky, the iPhone is slightly a little bit thicker, the bezel around the outside, but it's not anything that's going to deter you from one to another. You probably won't be able to tell in the video that you're seeing overhead at this moment, but the Pixel has a 1500 nits brightness display and the iPhone has a 2000 nits brightness display. 
Both of them are gonna be perfectly capable, as you can see, using them outside, and you're not gonna have any problems viewing the screen in the daylight. One thing to note with the Pixel, though, is it does have a default 1080p display out the box, and you do need to change that. So, if we go into the settings here, you can probably see the screen resolution. You can see the screen resolution on here, it's normally set to the high definition 1080, which for most people generally would most probably be okay. But for us, we want the full resolution. But noting this, that this does have an impact on your battery life. How much of an impact it has, I haven't yet to see. Um, I have managed to get a full day out of this phone using it generally as I would my normal iPhone. So I've not noticed that much of a difference that it's gonna completely drain your battery. Both phones have 120 hertz display, as you can see me scrolling through these sites. Let's go ahead and test the performance of the phone now, just trying a few different things like opening applications, a web browser, the photo app, cameras, etc., etc. So let's, let's start with photos. So we go ahead and press photos, and you can see it opens fairly quickly. Both phones have all the applications closed, so there's nothing open in the background. If we go ahead now and try the camera, they both take a similar amount of time in terms of opening. And then if we try the web browser, you can see I'm doing Safari and Chrome. I'm not trying to put the two browsers against each other, but you can see they both load fairly quickly. So in terms of the general, probably day-to-day -day usage, you're not really gonna notice too much difference between the two. But that being said, we'll go ahead and look at some benchmark tests that we can see on here, and we'll see how well they perform. So I have a few other apps as well. So let's go ahead and try Instagram. So if I open both of these up, you can see the iPhone opens just a little bit quicker. Both show notifications, so we can pop on there and have a look. Again, if you're not following me on, in, on my social medias, they are down in the description below. So do go ahead and give me a follow. Go ahead and try Twitter as well. So let's go ahead and open those up. And you can see again, the Pixel opens that ever so slightly faster. Let's go ahead and have a look at some benchmark tests. So we'll use an app called it Geekbench and we'll have a look at Mark 3D to see how well they perform. So we have the two apps downloaded already. So let's go ahead and open Geekbench between the two phones, accept it. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a CPU benchmark first, but let's run them at the same time and see what the results are and see which ones finish quicker. So we already have a score in for the iPhone already and the Pixel is still going, it's about 70 odd percent there. So we'll wait for that to finish up and then we'll go ahead and look at the two different results. And there is quite a substantial difference between the phone when you're running the benchmark test. You can see the single core test for the iPhone is 1877 and the single core is 1048 on the Pixel Pro. And on that multi-core, you can see it is a lot more as well, 5351 versus 3181. Interestingly though, when I look at the results of the multi-core and single core, uh, you don't actually see the iPhone 13 Pro Max listed down here. So I'll be interested to see what a quick comparison between the 13 Pro Max and the 14 Pro Max is. That was the uh, CPU test. Let's go ahead and run the compute test, which tests the GPU. So this can take anything between two to 10 minutes to complete. So let's see which one completes first. And already the iPhone is already complete and we're waiting for the Google Pixel. It's still on about 33%, just dropped to 40 as I was talking, and we'll come back once these results are done. You can see the results of the benchmark tests are absolutely way apart. 15,745 versus 4,451. That is a major difference between these two devices in terms of compute power. If you're looking to render videos off your phone, Maybe the Google Pixel isn't for you. Maybe you are leaning towards the iPhone. So this next test is from a website called Browser Bench. Now, if you spend your day browsing the web and having a look and wanting to see how quick your pages are gonna load, this is the one to test this on. So we'll go ahead and start the tests of both of these and we'll see how long it takes. You can see the iPhone is blitzing through these tests at this point and the Google Pixel is taking its time doing this. Um, hopefully it will catch up or go move, start moving a little bit quicker. And that is straight away, without a doubt, 377 runs a minute. I'll be very intrigued to see what the Google Pixel does on this. I don't think it will be anywhere near as quick because 
it's already taken double the amount of time to do this already. So I can't imagine this being more than 100, 150 runs per minute. So let's see what that final result comes back in at. And there we go, just as I expected, it took a lot longer than the iPhone did. So it's 101 runs per minute. So browsing on your iPhone is gonna be a little bit quicker than it is on the Google Pixel. Now, in terms of the battery, the iPhone 14 Pro Max has a 4,200 milliamp battery and the Google Pixel has a 5,000 milliamp battery. Now, I'm not gonna do a battery test in this video. If you wanna see a separate video on that, let me know down in the comments below and I'll see if I can put a video together on it. But GSM Arena has done this already and it shows that the iPhone does run longer than the Google Pixel. Now that does have a smaller battery in it, efficiency of the processor and the utilization within the phone itself. Now there are varying factors in this. I'm not to saying that this is definitely gonna be true, that you're definitely gonna get a battery, longer battery life out of your iPhone. All the tests have different factors which will give you different results. Next, I wanna show you the video playback on both of these phones. So I have a 4K 60 frames per second HDR video playing on these phones right now. If I quickly show you the settings, you can see 2160p HDR, so they're both HDR settings. They're both at the max brightness. So I'll let you make your opinion on what you think is slightly better. You can zoom in to pinch to fill the screen and the same with this one. The one thing I do notice on here with the display though, on the Google Pixel, you have the small little camera notch, which doesn't really get in the way, but the dynamic island is a lot bigger, so it's a lot more prominent within the video. So keep that one in mind when you are doing video playback. What we're gonna try and do now is do a quick sound test. So I'm gonna play some non-copyrighted music quickly, and we're gonna give it a listen and see how loud it goes. So I have my decibel meter here, so you should be able to see that on the screen right now. So let's start with the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Then we're gonna move on to the iPhone. So that's the music one. You're getting about 80 to 85 decibels there. You can probably hear there's a bit more depth in the sound in the iPhone itself. So the Pixel does sound a little bit more flat, but not sure that came through on the audio, but let me know if you picked up the differences between them and which one you think is better. Now we move on to the camera of the two phones. So let's start comparing them spec for spec. Both the Pixel and the iPhone have three cameras on the back of them. The Pixel has a 50 megapixel wide camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 48 megapixel telephoto camera. The front camera is 10.8 megapixels. This compares to the 48 megapixel main camera on the iPhone, the 12 megapixel ultra wide, and the 12 megapixel telephoto lens. Let's go ahead and jump straight into the photos and we'll start with the regular photo option. On the phones, you have 0 0.5, one and two times. On the iPhone, there is a three times option and on the Pixel, there is a five times option. But also, if you zoom in that little bit further, there is also a 15 times zoom on the iPhone and a 20 times zoom on the Pixel. Do keep in mind though, these images are taken during the day and I haven't done any editing to these at all. In the night mode, the iPhone stays in the same option but picks up that it is nighttime itself, but the Pixel has a night sight setting itself. Both pictures were taken at the same time and at the same spot, and you can see the Pixel has made the picture a lot more brighter. But there is no doubt that both of these phones do take great photos in low light. Now I apologize for this one now, it is a night mode selfie just so you can see how well the pictures look. And the Pixel, I have to say, does do a good job on the true tone color. For the macro lenses, both of these, I have to say, are amazing. Both photos actually automatically change into the macro mode as you get closer to your subject. And this is exactly what it looks like when you look at the leaves and also the flowers too. The pictures aren't actually exactly the same, but I tried to get them as close enough as I could. Next, we take a look at the long exposure. And on this one, you can see it's a bit of a no brainer with this option. The iPhone, you need to make sure you are in live mode, which you can then actually switch to long exposure. But on the Pixel, it has the option itself for choosing the long exposure photo. Now, the one that we probably want to look at is the portrait mode itself. Now for this one, both phones have one and two times options. And the Pixel doesn't seem to have a three times option, whereas the iPhone does. 
But one thing that the Pixel does go further is you can manually zoom in to five times. So you can see that the photo itself does get a bit more grainy, but that's because you are zooming in at a five times zoom. Now on the Pixel, there is something called the action pan mode, which basically allows you to take a picture of a moving object. And what that does is it makes the object still and blurs out the background. So I've tried to do this with this car here and I think it did it reasonably well considering the car was moving at some speed. Now we've taken a look at the photos, we move straight on to the videos. And the first mode we're gonna look at is the cinematic mode. Now there is an advantage in the iPhone on this one where you can change the points of focus after the video has been taken and that is a big thing. Unfortunately, the pixel, you can only change it while you are taking the video itself. Now, unfortunately on this next one, you're gonna have to take a look at me again, uh, but this is the daytime video front facing camera of me walking down the street. Next, I tried to do a cinematic pan on the iPhone. Now there isn't a specific option on this, but I actually slowed it down in post editing but you can see the Pixel does a great job from this and there is an option mode on the camera itself. There is also the action mode at night, so we've seen this on the iPhone, this is now available on the Pixel as well. And you can see the night mode on either of them isn't really that great. It is designed to be done on daytime where there is a lot more light and it has the ability to stabilize the image. Both phones do a pretty good job during the day as you can see. Pixel only outputs at 1080p, but upscales to 4K, and the iPhone only does 2.8K. Now there is one more thing I wanna note on the cinematic mode, and that is how you see the camera itself. Now you can see me doing a screen recording here. The Pixel itself does the real-time stabilization, whereas the iPhone does this in post. So not really a deal breaker, but it's one to know when you are actually taking a video so you know what it looks like. I really do hope you found this video useful. I have gone through the areas that I think are most important on this phone and I hope I've covered it all. If you do like it, drop me a comment down below and do hit the like button. If there's something I've missed, again, do let me know down in the comments below. The links to the phones are in the description below. They are linked to my Amazon affiliate, so it does help me bring you more videos like this because they do take a little bit of time to put together and to buy the products. I do hope you consider subscribing to the channel. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.